and today we're going to do a drawing of the Dagonosed Shark, a highly endangered species. I have constructed myself a little maquette, which is a little model, which is what I'm drawing from. I'm able to then draw from all different angles, so I can choose an angle that I'm happy with. And as we go through this, if I am going a bit too fast, just pause the video and uh, draw along. Okay, some sweeping shark lines here. I'm going to start off with, that's going to be where the main body is. A bit of a head coming off there. A couple of lines here for the swishy tail. Just refining the head shape there a bit. And of course we're going to bring this down to a bit of a point because that's the daggery part of the dagger nose. It's giving a bit of a chubby cheek there. So you can see I'm sort of going over the lines a few times just to sort of refine where I want to put them. Now they have really big pectoral fins so you can make them quite large. But keep in mind they're all individuals a bit different. You know, if you walk down the street, you see, you know, a short fat man, a tall skinny man. You know, people are all different shapes and sizes, and so are other animals as well. May not have as many variations as humans, but there are slight variations. So don't worry if things are not exactly perfect. Okay, so I'm popping in a few dorsal fins here. Working out, this uh, the shark's taking a bit of a sharp corner here. So this part of the tail here is coming around just over the top of that pectoral fin. May even have to make the pectoral fin a little bit longer. But that's the top part of the tail fin. And comes down to a little bit here, which is the other little part of the tail fin and as always I'll sneak in a little picture at the side of this so you can see what the finished fish looks like the little fins at the back here and we've got the basic shape down so I wanted to give it a feeling that it's moving like it's sort of turning a corner quickly underwater and a shade in the dorsal fin there I'm putting in some gills here uh, Great thing about having the maquette is that the light shines down on it. I can get this uh, view of this shark that uh, I can't really get if it's underwater. Well, I probably could if I was very, very lucky. But since it's such an endangered species and I'm not likely to come in contact with it, unless I'm going to get a ticket to Brazil, which is unlikely in this lockdown, I can work from maquettes and do the best I can this way. Making a maquette, like a little sculpture, is a great way of doing things that you can't actually see in real life. Whether it's a dinosaur or a dragon or a fantasy creature, making a maquette will give you this little added extra bit of realism. So I'm starting to shade in bits here. I start off sort of pressing little, it's like colouring in just just very very lightly you don't press too hard not to start with if you turn your pencil to the side like this you can shade in like three or four times as fast because you're covering wider areas just have to be a little bit more careful it takes a bit of practice but you get that control and it's a really good way of shading holding the pencil to the side here helps you sort of block in shadows and with the blocking in sort of gives you more form I guess there's still lines there, I'm just sort of making them really thick. It's one of those things you could, if you wanted to, go over and smudge a lot of those lines and blend them in. I, I kind of like them sort of a bit rough. So I'll just continue shading here. Again, doing it lightly, but when I go over and over and over the same bits, it sort of slowly builds up darkness and it gets a bit darker. So it's not going straight for the darkest straight away, it's so sort of slowly building up those tones. So now I'm holding the pencil this way again, just to get a bit more control. I can also, when I'm holding it this way, I can press harder and get even darker in areas. If you're not feeling confident, it's good to have a scrap of paper next to your drawing and just have a little practice. 
Just refining a little bit around the eye. I often like to put quite a dark, heavy line underneath a drawing. Refining the gills a bit. So it's becoming quite a tonal piece. And if you practice your tones, that's where you can get realism happening. Things look a little bit more realistic when you can practice getting those tones right. Just so this video doesn't go on forever, I'm going to speed over a few bits. If you are drawing along, you can stop and pause bits. I will leave at the end of this video an image of the completed drawing, like I did at the beginning of the video. And uh, you can pause that, copy that if you want. And if you're not quite sure how something happened, just come back over and have a look at how I did a certain part of it. It's the magic of YouTube. So when I was researching this, I found that a lot of the images on Google search were either of an illustration, uh, not photos, but if there were photos, it's usually photos of dead Dagonos sharks, which is a little bit sad. Which is why I wanted to make one look like it's alive and moving around. Instead of having one long skinny image of the shark, I wanted to have it a little bit more compact. And so having it turning made it a little bit more of an interest, like it's moving or turning underwater. I think that kind of adds a little bit of movement to the creature rather than having it stiff out straight. In future videos, I want to do a thresher shark with that nice big long tail. Now I'll probably do a similar sort of a thing. So I've built up lots of shady parts there. I have a bit of a plan to make it look like it's underwater in a minute. Just getting all the tones right at the moment. I'm using a fairly soft pencil. It's like a 4B. And so you get an eraser on a 4B, it takes it off quite easily without damaging the paper. 4B is probably one of my favourite pencils. If you're not familiar with how things go, uh, 2B, 4B, 6Bs are all soft. HBs in the middle. And then when you start going 2H or 4H, they're really hard pencils and they all gouge into your paper and you don't want that. Okay, so I'm getting the eraser and I'm erasing lines down here and then I'm going back and I'm making them thin. The reason I'm doing this is to make it look like light coming through waves or light coming through the movement in the water, making the light go a bit funny and dance on the back of the shark here. Uh, you see this at the bottom of swimming pools on nice bright days when the sun shines through, it will come down and form funny patterns either on the bottom of the seafloor if it's very shallow water or if there's a shark or whale or dolphin, anything like that coming up close to the surface, it will dance along the back of them too. They look like tiny little white lightning bolts. So this very endangered animal, unfortunately on the brink of extinction, is found in shallow water. So I would expect that if we had pictures of it underwater, we'd probably see this sort of light dancing around on its back. And of course the pectoral fins here would pick up a fair bit of that as well. So just using the eraser. And just refining those shapes and wiggling them up a bit. So without any reference whatsoever, I can make up something fairly realistic just through a polyclay model with cardboard and uh, a light and just a bit of imagination. The great thing about pencils is you can take away bits and you can add bits to it and you can keep going until you've got something you're fairly happy with. Also notice that tail is a lot darker than the pectoral fin because I wanted it to stand out. I wanted the pectoral fin and the tail not to get confused. Now with the eraser I'm just cleaning up around the edges a little bit. You can see the back both sides of the dorsal fin hasn't got much detail on it all and I want it that way because again that's kind of realism gives you the feeling that there's light shining down onto it and here is 
our Dagonose shark. Now, it'd be great if you did draw along with me. If not, it'd be great if you're an artist and you can just go and do a drawing of this. What we need to do is probably do lots of drawings of Dagono's shark, put them up on social media, put them up on Instagram, on Facebook, and let people know that uh, this is a highly endangered animal. In the description of this video, I have a link to a petition to ask for extra protection for this animal. It is a protected animal, but unfortunately that's not policed. What we need is some sort of marine park, some sort of safe area for this animal to thrive. Thanks for watching this video and please share it with others. Get the word out there that the Dagonose shark needs protection. And I'll see you in the next video.